All right, a former executive editor of the New York Times is taking aim at her former employer in a new book. She says the paper has become unmistakably anti-Trump and is mixing news with opinion and analysis. Now, part of this is a shift at the Times, which helped push subscription levels from 600,000 to 2 million during the Trump's first six months in office. This isn't the first time Abramson has criticized the New York Times. In June, she called out the paper for missing the rise and surprising upset victory by Democrat Congressperson-elect Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, who will soon represent New York's 14th district. For more on all of this, we go to legal and media analyst Lino. Lino, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. All right. So, New York Times bias, um, you know, let alone <laughs> a, 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 in the Trump coverage. I mean, this, this is pretty big for a, a former editor-in-chief, you know, someone running the New York Times to come out and say, no? Well, first of all, they're going to be saying that she has sour grapes because she was basically canned by the Times. But let me ask you a question, Steve. Have you ever heard the expression that sometimes we will see a star that burned out millions of years ago, but the light hasn't hit us yet? That's the New York Times. See, for $25,000 and a new car, name the <laughs> one thing that you go to the New York Times for now. Name, name the thing. Is it reviews, theater reviews? Nope, that's Yelp. Is it book reviews? No, Amazon's moving up. What is it? Is it the opinion page? Is it the endorsements? Tell me, please. Uh, maybe the book reviews are kind of good, but food, restaurants. What is it? Because the New York Times is dead. It's not there anymore. It doesn't exist. It's there in, in memory. It's there as this historical vestige but it's osios, it's, it's concretized, it's an anachronism. These are new times. She does speak about one thing too, uh, Steve. She says that perhaps maybe because of the, I don't want to say youth, which is a very good thing, but there are people today manning the keyboards who don't understand the distinction between opinion and fact and journalism and the like. So her book should really be called No Blank, a street term for no kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, she writes it in the upcoming book of hers, and this is probably this is where this, these quotes come from. By the way, it's called Merchants of Truth. I wonder how the New York Times will review her book eventually. Uh, <laughs> she writes of her successor, Dean Paquette. Though Paquette said publicly he didn't want the Times to be the opposition party, his news pages were unmistakably anti-Trump. Given its most liberal audience, there was an implicit financial reward for the Times in running lots of Trump stories, almost all of them negative. Uh, so it, it, is, is it your opinion? Seriously, I mean, this seems like a, you know, a set-up question, but is that what drives any kind of bias at any kind of publication? Is it all about money, or is there actual a political bent uh, in these newsrooms? Look at the stories involving their paywall. Look at how they've had to sell off real estate. This is not some philanthropic venture. This is a for-profit enterprise. And what they're also doing is, in addition to the facts, Steve, which is absolutely correct, they are, they are, they are cash-starved, cash-crazy. I'm sorry, it's not what it used to be. But also, there's something which is even more, and you know this, when you've been around New York and Washington and L.A. enough, Steve, there is a bubble. There is this inertial bubble that they live in, and what they do is they talk to each other, they speak to each other, and they think because they've been the New York Times for so long. They believe the heft of their own, their own uh, reputation. They believe that they speak on behalf of other people. So what I'm saying is, and I'm, very, very, I'm, I'm being dead serious about this, what we're looking at right now is an anachronism. We're looking at people right now, newsrooms, we're talking about media platforms, we're talking about the media world itself going through convulsions of change, and they're hanging on. And Abramson is 100% correct. And what we're also seeing right now is a group of people completely out of tune with real America. I don't mean Podunk, Mayberry, you know, Hooterville. I mean the Bronx. I mean, I mean outside Alexandria. Well, I mean parts of the country uh, that do not reflect their right. But they, they did. They did increase their readership, according to her, from uh, six hundred thousand to a couple of million. So whatever they did, it worked for them at least temporarily. Lionel, good to speak to you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.